Hey, this is Steve Good on the Coin Chat with Yuri Cataldo. Today we are doing a special episode on the unbanked. And for those of you who don't understand what the unbanked is, we brought two experts onto the show to talk about it. One is Magdiela Rivas, who is from Paxful, and the other is Ruben, Ruben Malcolm as well, from uh, Air TM, uh, based out of Mexico. So welcome to both of you. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. Um, and maybe just to start, Ruben, because you're you're new to us, and you know you you've not had RTM on the show before. Why? Could you just give us a little background on kind of the why you know the unbanked is a problem, and then what you guys are doing to kind of address it? Sure, Yuri uh, and uh, Steve. Thank you for having us on the show. First, um, always happy to speak to people in the crypto community about RTM because. We feel that there's a lot of noise in the crypto community about helping the unbanked, uh, but it's very difficult for people in the space to really understand how crypto can actually help the unbanked. Sure. And mm -hmm. we are trying to do that, to bring some of crypto and some of the new things or concepts that it has come to, to bring to the world yeah. to people that need it most. Uh, for instance, we at RTM are focused on giving people who live in broken economies access to financial services. And we started in Venezuela, which you could say is the most broken of economies, where inflation last year was 79,000%, making it impossible for you to save to buy a car or pay your next month's tuition if your kid's going to school yeah. or your apartment's rent in a week. Mm -hmm. or your money is not connected to the financial system in the world. So it's very difficult for you to buy something from abroad. Or if you receive an international payment for work done on freelancer.com or whatever, or if you receive a remittance, you get dinged with horrible exchange rates. Yeah. And sometimes you lose up to 90% of your money. And what we do is we, we give people access to this USD wallet. They could use to save money, they could use to buy things and they could use to receive money either for payments or remittances and all at fair exchange rates and commissions. That's we do that because we are able to kind of combine this new concept of over the counter trading with a yeah. regular e-wallet mm -hmm. where we, if you want to say you're a Venezuelan guy and you make money in Bolivars that are quickly devaluating because of inflation, you're able to go into RTM.com, request a deposit with your Venezuelan bank. Yeah. And we will match you with some person in Venezuela who will be willing to sell you dollars in RTM in exchange right. for them to send you or for you to send them, the Venezuelan guy to send their RTM money broker right. a transfer using the, the national banking system. Mm -hmm. And then the Venezuelan guy could save the money for however long he wants to. And then right. when he needs to use it, he can withdraw it back to his bank because we'll also match them to some other money broker yeah. that will buy those dollars from them in exchange for sending them, the Venezuelan user, a bank transfer. So just to ask you one thing, Ruben. So in yeah. a way, does this not, this, this sounds to me like a fantastic way to solve the problem of black market trading where they don't have to do that. They can just come to RTM. They can do a trade peer to peer between themselves and a broker or another person. And if they have, this, for example, Boli, you know, Venezuelan Bolivar and they want to get to dollar, they can do that without getting scammed on the black market or getting huge expensive exchange rates or what have you. And you're there to support them. Exactly. That's amazing. Uh, for all of those of you listening on the show, it's very common for places where where there's high inflation rates for there to be a parallel market where right. you can mm -hmm. buy foreign currency, currency that actually preserves, preserves its wealth through time um, in a black market because yeah. there's no uh, government allowed or regulated exchange houses like there is almost in every country. Sure. It's just mm -hmm. very difficult. And so there's these black markets. Yeah. And the exchanges are super different from what the, the government says they are. 
and people get scammed and there's no one regulating this and it's, it's not safe. You can just imagine going to a dark corner with some cash in some street. Yep. Giving right. someone wads of cash to get a bill, not knowing what the exchange rate well, listen, or what I mean, I've, actually I've was. All around the world. And I've been to countries that were in massive distress, but I travel because I'm not afraid to travel. And I've been to places that were still communist. I've been to countries that were in huge financial stress. And I have been approached by many people trying to do black market trading, taking you to dark alleys to try to trade you and do their little magic tricks where they show you bills. And the first couple of bills are like real, and the rest is just paper. So I've seen it. I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's horrible and it's scary and it's sad because people become desperate just to get access to basic funds and do basic banking. So, so you know, congrats for what you guys have done so far in building this. It's great. Um, if, I, if you don't mind, just for one second, I just want to pop over to Magdiela because Magdiela, we didn't give you a chance to tell us about Paxful. Of course, you've been on the show before. We'll put a little comment up here in the little corner so people can check it out and see the previous episode where we had Arish and Bitmart together talking about what Paxful does. But for people who haven't seen that episode, just give us a little background on what Paxful is doing and how it also fits with the unbanked community. So uh, Paxful is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace of Bitcoin. Uh, so it allows to uh, our users to buy Bitcoin uh, directly from each other. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They are the ones that decide like all the trade like uh, requirements and the payment methods that we'll use. Uh, we have like over a little bit more uh, than 300 payment methods right now in the platform. So you can buy Bitcoin using all of these. And uh, one of the most popular payment methods right now in Paxful is gift cards. And it's precisely because uh, the unbanked people didn't have access to bank accounts. You right. know? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they still wanted to buy Bitcoin, but they, they didn't have uh, this traditional way to buy and sell the, the Bitcoin. So right. Uh, find a way to like access a financial system by acquiring Bitcoin with gift cards and sure. then send that Bitcoin to another person by, uh, by like lending their bank, the, their bank accounts. So right. uh, it's, it's a really interesting dynamic and like we're really committed to like give access to, to the financial service to, to these people like mm -hmm. using mm -hmm. cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin. To, to serve to serve the community in that sense also like I want to touch a little bit about the remittance sure. uh, especially in America because like RTM and me like I'm focused uh, my job in Paxful is specifically working on Latin America and remittance is a really like important use case for Bitcoin so imagine like for example I'm here in the US and I want to send money to my mom and if I want to do it like in the traditional like ways of sending money, Western Union MoneyGram, I have to pay a lot of money to do that. So using Paxful, uh, RTM, uh, using cryptocurrency, I can send money to my mom and make a profit out of it. You know, like lend, like I put an offer in Paxful, somebody in Mexico buys my Bitcoin at a like 5% above the market uh, range and then like deposit that uh, money to my mom's account and then she receives her money. Awesome. So it's, oh, wow. it's That's uh, so beautiful. I love that. Really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're committed so, to offer these kind of things. To, yeah. To so, so now, of course, yeah. you know, Ruben and Magdiela, you know, between uh, RTM and Paxful, you guys have also now uh, put a, you know, a partnership together. So yeah. if we pop back over to Ruben, for example, first, I mean, Ruben, just, you want to just kind of walk us through and tell us uh what what was it that got this partnership started and what is it solving in addition to what you're already doing for sure um i guess everyone on the space is kind of trying to connect money somewhere or another just to enable more financial freedom around the world and in an effort to do that rtm and paxful kind of begun to work together not only are we super similar platforms in the sense that even though people use us for different reasons, um, we are a marketplace where a broker of money sells it to someone who wants to buy it or sell it. 
uh, just an OTC platform. And as such, we allow people exchange any type of money for any other type of money and we thought it would be cool if our users um, could use Airtia money as one of the types of money that you could use to buy bitcoin and paxful mm -hmm. and not only that but since i guess Airtia's money is kind of widely accepted in certain places in the world like venezuela then it also gives them more access to do more things with it like buying bitcoin on paxful Right. Um, cool. they, they already do it, and we just thought that it would be cool if we made something out of that. Yeah. Which was awesome. And how how big is yeah. the the AirTM platform now in terms of users? Well, we've helped over two hundred thousand people kind of buy dollars or, or do something with AirTM. Okay. And uh, are there any particular countries where you're, where you're really finding the most growth in this unbanked community? Yeah, well, we started in Venezuela where, as I mentioned, the inflation last year was rampant and it has been like that for years and years on end. As the place where there would be more desire or need for a platform such as AirTMs where anyone could get access to dollars. And given the circumstances there and how they have worsened over the years, the Venezuela diaspora has taken their TM in their pockets to a bunch of countries like Colombia, Chile, Peru, Mexico, Spain. And so our, our usage is mainly where all of the Venezuelans kind of went. And right. in Venezuela, mm -hmm. which is like the nucleus of this whole thing. Amazing. Great. Ruben, could you talk a little bit about, so behind you, there's a lot of photographs of people pointing at their computer screens. Would you tell us a little more background of, of what that is and what we're looking at? Sure. So just for everyone to see, just a bunch of pictures of ARTM users. Okay. I kind of, it's here in our office, kind of next to this big table where everyone comes to work. Um, I guess to us, it's a reminder of why we're here. Mm -hmm. um, and in a sense, I bet that that's why a lot of people are in the crypto space. Yeah. Uh, we believe in financial freedom and we're also sort of rebels. I guess we're rebels and we also believe in freedom. Mm -hmm. And if you think about financial services, they're not very free in the sense that not everyone has access to them. Right. And as financial services enable freedom and some other organizations, governments kind of fight hard to, to oppress people, then and we can do something about it uh, because technology is here and it enables us to do something about it. Then we do. And we do it for, for all of them, all of those people who live in a country where their government, for some reason, believes that they shouldn't have financial freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we work. And that's why probably everyone in the space kind of feels that way. And since all of us here are doing a bunch of different things that maybe are difficult to associate with that, that is just a reminder that everyone here is actually helping. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, do you have any I'm stories sure. that you've heard from customers about, like, what happened and the, the benefits or results for them personally, that thing that you can share just to give people a sense as to the, the impact you're having on people? Sure. So in your team, there's two types of users and the impact we generate for them is then twofold. For the ARTM money brokers, uh, traders on Paxful or local Bitcoins, they make money doing this. They, they make up to a hundred dollars a day sometimes, even more just by facilitating these transactions. And that's meaningful income for someone in a developing nation. That mm -hmm. is just family sustenance for a family of five in Venezuela. Yeah, That's very significant for us. Wow. So that's one type of impact we have. Um, I'll show you a picture of one. Guy in the blue shirt. Oh, sorry, Ruben, you, you muted yourself. 
Sorry, I'll try not to do that. Anyway, that's <laughs> one guy in the one guy in the wall. Right. And then there's others, and I there's just thousands of stories of people that have been financially enabled by RTM to do something, yeah. either to work as a freelancer for a company abroad and mm -hmm. actually be able to receive that money and cash it out to the fair exchange rate, not having to go to some shady Facebook group where some random guy's like, hey, send me your uh, PayPal money and I'll send you uh, money to your bank, which is what it usually, the way it usually happens, you know. Or we've also enabled a ton of people to receive a remittance from the people that they managed to send out into Spain or into the US, Mexico, Peru, uh, to receive that remittance. And that is also the way that they survive. Yeah. Uh, by help from their family. And also, uh, we've had people that just use their camp to preserve their wealth, which is That's the incredible. most meaningful. Well, sure. Services. So if you're like in Bolivar, you move to dollars, you're preserving your wealth or in fact, probably making more wealth relative to the economy as the currency continues to tumble. So exactly. great for countries, whether it's Venezuela or Turkey, that's had terrible problems with its currency or countries all around the world that are just struggling to have. I mean, even there's a lot of countries that just don't have a lot of um, access to banking services or to being able to do just trade against multiple currencies. So you're giving access to a lot of people around the world to do a lot more than they were able to do. Yeah. Incredible. How, how difficult you. is it to get these money brokers signed up to help you guys? I mean, they're not banks, right? Well, what are the money? No, they're, brokers? People. Exactly. they're people. They're either Paxful traders, local Bitcoin traders, just regular air cameras that noticed that okay. a broker was making a fee and therefore wanted to make a fee themselves. Okay. So if somebody wants to be a broker, let's say Yuri, you know, Yuri's a pretty, you know, comfortable guy and he wants to help out some of the people down there. So how does someone like Yuri get involved? Sorry, Yuri, just, you know, just having fun. Here. How, That's how right. Someone, yeah, this is fun. Fair how enough. does someone like Yuri decide, I want to be a broker and I'd like to help out some of the community. We, you've already established that this is an escrow based system. So his money is safe. It's running through your system. How does he get involved? To help That's make a difference for the world. a very interesting idea. We have never explored sort of selling being an RTM money broker as a way to help people in Venezuela. But you're essentially being a direct enabler of more financial freedom by being an RTM money broker. I mean, look, you're here uh, on the show. If we can send people to you. For sure. To help out. So yeah. any, any this is a call to action out. to RTM to start. Let's get the action going. Let's get people <laughs> out there helping you who've got some funds available who will make a little bit of money here and there on the side and help people in need. Yeah, so anyone who wants to do that, first off, you can write me at ruben at rtm.io or .com. I personally like IO better, um, <laughs> but it's an internal struggle. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, you can go into airtm.com, sign up as a regular user, and after you complete a couple of transactions, um, maybe a deposit or withdraw, you will see a button on your top right that says advanced dashboard. And on your advanced dashboard, you'll be able to see these trades. Yep. Mm -hmm. regular, regular Venezuelans trying to do something like uh, deposit money from the U.S. banking system into their TM right. or sell an Amazon gift card because that's how they get paid in their work or um, trying to sell some money on NetTeller, which is a popular e-wallet in developing nations that you used to get paid, you used to get paid via, for platform work, for freelancer work. And by helping these guys kind of go from RTM and out of RTM into any of these other systems, yep. you are effectively helping someone do something with their money that they needed to do to, to live. Exactly. Because, yeah, that's what people in these countries do. And the transactions in RTM are super small. They're $40 on average. And that just gives you an idea of, of the kind of people we're helping with RTM and that you could be helping as an advanced user in RTM. It's someone who's trying to save forty dollars. Someone who's trying to receive a remittance worth forty dollars. That's pretty incredible. All right, so let's 
Oh. Back over to Paxful for a minute. I know we're, we don't have too much time. I'm just checking the time here. So I know we don't have too much time left, but I don't want to leave Paxful in the cold here. So, <laughs> so Magdiela. So Paxful is like the great enabler for us. So Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, so yeah, okay, that's great. So the great enabler, Magdiela, tell us a little bit about what makes you guys great enablers. Thank you for the question. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of the same as uh, uh, Ruben already said, right? Like, um, we have like over like 2.5 million users around the world and you can connect with any user in any other country. If you're in Latin America, you can like send money easily to someone in Europe, to someone in Africa. So, uh, you can like, facilitate these transactions and send Bitcoin and use somebody else's like uh, bank account if you don't if you don't have one right and in fact well as like some of the use cases as Ruben has said like we have a lot of users that just use Paxful to make money, right? There's a lot of opportunity to make arbitrage uh, in the platform uh, because of like the fact that we offer like over 300 payment methods. It is like in average faster, you receive the money faster than if you do it like in a traditional exchange to buy Bitcoin. So uh, for that, they can easily sell, uh, sell the Bitcoin at a, price above the market right yeah so mm -hmm. they use it to to make money i have like as i told you before i focus in latin america and lots of our our users use the platform because it's like their their source of income it's their work like they're in the platform 24 7 are uh, selling buying uh bitcoin and for example i have an example of one teacher that he was giving classes and he got paid like nothing you know he couldn't like maintain or pay for the bills in, the, in his family and now he's like using impactful as a full-time job and he makes more money he sets like his own schedule and everything so it's a it's a way like to to bring like these kind of opportunities to the people that at the beginning we didn't really like think about it we just wanted to facilitate like an easy way to buy right ourselves. that's very cool in these like economies where you need like these other kind of, of like opportunities and people is looking for ways to make money or to like pay the bills or Awesome. Uh, they're they're always like inventing new things on yeah. how yeah, yeah, for sure. how to make money and survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yuri, did you want to you want to ask anything else? Because I mean, we're just kind of getting to right. Work. Well, no, this is quick, but I'm curious. So, so, Magdalena, how did you how did you get involved in working with Paxwell? Well, uh, I was interested in the crypto crypto world. You know, in I'm from Mexico and. It was like interesting for me because I'm, I'm living in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and you need to send money to your family one way or another, you know, and one day like someone told me, oh, you can use Bitcoin to do that. So I just started like to get involved and like start to know a little bit more about like how, how crypto was used for. And then I, I found Paxful and I found this opportunity that uh, was like focused on Latin America, which is like since I'm from them, it's like my passion and I want to help people from Latin America. Awesome. And I feel like their commitment to, to their own bank, to, on, to the people that it underserved and all mm -hmm. this like social uh, commitment that they have with the community in giving away uh, what we have received as a company because we are what, and, or we are where we are because of them. Mm -hmm. So we have all these social initiatives of, of building schools around Africa and now around Latin America we will start doing something. And I was like really, I felt in love with the mission of school, uh, bringing this like financial freedom and bringing back to the communities. So yeah. as well. So just so just yeah. quickly, so what was it that brought the two of you guys together to work together? What was that kind of moment where you guys realized you could build a partnership? Yes, it was uh, users in RTM trying to buy Bitcoin with RTM money in Paxful uh, and thus wanting to <laughs> enable that even more. So the yeah. users actually brought that request to you guys. 
Yeah. I also wanted to like serve more, more people in Latin America, which was it's amazing. Of RTM, so the partnership made completely sense for both parts. So, so this is really yeah. actually, I, I just got to step, I just got to step back and ask myself this question because I don't know how widespread is Bitcoin becoming as far as adoption goes across South and Central America. But what you guys are both telling us. The, the, the vast majority of the world has no idea what's going on. What I'm hearing you guys both saying to me is, I want to send mother, money to my mom, so I just sent Bitcoin because it was easy. I want to get my Bolivars to something that's got a future value. I'm going to switch to dollars or I'm going to use Bitcoin. I, I'm, that's what I'm hearing you both say. Is that right? How widespread is Bitcoin becoming across these regions? It's growing, but uh, like adoption, it, there's like still a long way to go. In sure, terms of course. Of, sure. A lot of people that still don't know about Bitcoin or yeah. that learn something about cryptocurrencies or something, but they have no idea how it works, and they have like they have this fear or of getting involved because they don't want to lose money or because they have been involved in some kind of like pyramid scam or something. Yeah. So there's a lot of work that still to be like done in terms of education for to to like increase the level of adoption in the well, region. Well, the good news for you, Magdiela, is that Yuri and I have been writing a book. It's going to be out in October. It's going to be translated into Spanish. We already have our translators lined up. And we will be happy to send a copy to you so you guys can both read it. And if you like it, you can share it with all your friends down in Central and South America to help them get on board and become customers for you too. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I want to add something to what Magdillo was saying. Please, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be happy to read your book. <laughs> <laughs> She, she was saying something and you guys are all saying the same thing, which is people in developing nations have more problems than us that live in more developed nations. And what they also have more than us is the desire to fix those problems. They will go great lengths to solve them because for them, it's not a matter of, Hey, Coinbase dings me with, this and this commission, and I could do better with uh, this other thing. Yeah. It's like, you no, know, uh, if I don't do it, my family won't have something to eat tomorrow. Right. I won't be able to pay the rent, my kids' tuition, my mom's yeah. cancer treatment. They'll do whatever. And Bitcoin's a great tool. And not just Bitcoin, all cryptocurrencies. And all we kind of do is bring those tools closer to them so that mm -hmm. they can use them to solve their problems in their day to day life. Amazing. That's, wow. that's awesome. Well, yeah. look, I mean, thank you both for, for taking the time out today to join us on the show. Yuri, is there any last thoughts, points you want to make? No, no, this has been great. Thank you cool. guys so much. So, so look, Magdiela from, from Paxful and Ruben from AirTM, this has been a real pleasure for both Yuri and me. And I, to be honest, for me personally, very eye-opening. Um, this is a really big topic for me. I really want to do something to help people. So if this is not the, the best ever call to action episode we've ever done, I don't know what is, because this is the greatest opportunity ever to get involved and to do things to help the unbanked. So, you know, thank you both for, for taking the time out to be on the show today. And to all of our listeners out on podcast land and our viewers and subscribers, thanks for checking in. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, a share, uh, ring the little bell, because then we'll be notifying you when the next episodes come out. And, um, yeah, thanks both of you for, for taking the time out today. To the moon. Until next time, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, Yuri. Bye, thanks, guys.